yes, Coffee Conversations with Greg J is on all systems go. What it do, y'all? Greg J here, Coffee Conversations, where we have culturally relevant conversations on a variety of topics from a global perspective. There's some out there that might ask, why aren't we hyper local from Long Beach where we uh, originate from? We're intentionally global just because our uh, studios are here in Long Beach. We uh, reach out to Los Angeles a lot, Inglewood, New York City, Chicago, Detroit, across the world to Johannesburg. And that's where we're going to uh, speak to today. A lot of you ask me about my trips to Africa, as you know, since 2010, have been going, taking uh, tour groups over to South Africa, uh, been exploring West Africa the last couple of years, and, uh, you know, established a lot of really great relationships. Being a radio broadcast veteran executive, uh, really maintained a lot of great relationships with broadcasters across the globe. Uh, because we do believe in building b bridges of music, arts, and culture with Africa and African Americans. So a lot of y'all always ask me about, man, what's the music like? Of course, that's the second most popular question. The number one question is, what's the food like? <laughs> but folks do ask me all the time about the music and the radio stations and all of that. And uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who is a renowned broadcaster over there in Johannesburg, South Africa. I actually, uh, when I started my trips uh, to South Africa, I was getting online and listening to various radio stations across South Africa just to catch a vibe of what they were doing on the radio and all that. And I used to listen to this woman religiously. She was just so dope with her presentation. The music that she was playing was just so on point. And then when I finally made it over to uh, one of my trips uh, to South Africa, I surprised her and came in, you know, I began to communicate with her by Twitter, right, at first. And then uh, when I arrived in Johannesburg, I surprised her. We met face to face and we've been great friends ever since. It's been some years now. So today we're going to talk about music, specifically South African jazz. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just bring her in live from Johannesburg, South Africa, known both the ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. <laughs> good. Well, good morning to you, but it's evening this side. It's 11 minutes after 6 p.m. Uh, in Johannesburg, South Africa. Thank you for having me, Greg. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. Thank you for coming. I mean, man, you know, it's it's always, a, we speak frequently on Facebook, but it's just always good to see your face and to have this one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation with you as we talk about the music. First of all, how you been? You been okay? I've been okay. I turned 45 two days ago, uh, mm -hmm. so I'm feeling uh, super grown up. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday yes 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 all right you know Thank really, you. really good. you know known I, I uh was really you and i have had some music conversations as i reflect back on our conversations we have talked a little bit about music and everything and um yes. the other day you were sharing with me about you know south african jazz and a lot of people while this might be kind of a far reaching conversation for those of us in America. Uh, yeah. But uh, let us just center the conversation on Hugh Masekela. Everyone yes. here, we know Hugh Masekela, Grazing in the Grass. Uh, you know, there's a few other tunes out there. We, we've seen him across the lexicon of black music. Yes. Specific yes. jazz in America, but what, does Hugh Masekela mean to um, South Africa? Um, look, he he was the voice of, just like the likes of Mamira Makeba, he was that person that was proudly South African, proudly African, uh, but also would take brand South Africa to the world. And as someone who I remember as someone, the first time I saw him on television, before I'd actually started my broadcasting career, he was someone who was exiled, but came back home and still spoke uh, the language so well um, and was still so proud. And he would, you know, tell us stories about how when he got into the States, you know, artists that he worked with, 
um, was so proud of, of, of the fact that he's a man that's proud of being South African and telling South African stories. I mean, you know, Johannesburg is, is a melting pot of so many uh, different cultures. Um, I mean, earlier on, you talked about the food. In Johannesburg alone, uh, you can find an Ethiopian restaurant, you can find a Congolese restaurant, um, I mean, you can find a Mozambican restaurant. And there was never a home. Uh, he was also for the young and old, and he wasn't ageist. Um, I was having a conversation not so long ago with an amazing playwright, uh, James Ngobo, who was good friends with, with, with Brahim Masikel and also had him at the Market Theatre to do a show at the Market Theatre, that Brahim uh, would speak to you, um, you know, as though he met you just yesterday. And you speak to young jazz musicians that we have now, the likes of Billy Munama, uh, the likes of an amazing young trumpeter, Mandam Langeni. And there's still that smile in their voice that Brahu was for them. He was always super hip. I don't know if you've heard his latest offering, uh, Mango Tree, um, with the Saparia Deltones. So there is no family gathering. There is no... I mean, I, I, I was talking to you the other day about what's saddening me now is where you find South African radio not doing justice to playing more South African jazz music, where love is shown to artists, particularly jazz musicians, South African jazz musicians, only after they've died. Um, so I, being a broadcaster, I still say we need more South African jazz music. I mean, yes, we are global. We are Afropolitan as uh, my previous radio home, Kai FM, we used to say, um, we have brothers like you and the sisters that you bring through. Um, but I would imagine you listen to South African music or Nigerian music to have a feel of the motherland. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, yes, we grew up with, with the Don Hathaways. We grew up with uh, uh, the Coltrane's and the Miles Davis. Um, I mean, I was telling Leila Hathaway graced our South African shores not so long ago. And I was telling her how it's become a full, it became a full circle moment for me because I used to listen to her dad, Donny Hathaway, and now here she is. Um, the Diane Reeves of the world as well. But it's important that our children know Brahim Masikela's music. It's important that our grandchildren know their music. It's important that a young uh, Bokani Dyer as well, who's a young jazz musician, understands and appreciates Brahim Masikela. He hated weaves, by the way. <laughs> Brahim Masikela hated weaves. Uh, he wouldn't shake your hand um, as a man and a, as a woman. He wouldn't greet you if you're wearing a weave because he believed that as, 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 as black and brown people, we are beautiful as we are. Um, so why not be proud of our music? And I still say, Greg, I don't know that side with, with, with radio stations, but here in South Africa, you have, for example, a mainstream uh, radio station. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's, you know, saying goodbye to a jazz show. We have an amazing broadcaster, jazz broadcaster, which champions, uh, you know, the jazz jazz unity in South Africa. Um, so she had a show on a Sunday night um, and they, they've let her go. They're lost because guess what? She's joining us at, on 702. <laughs> so... Oh, it's, uh, wow. You know, you know, no, it's interesting. I, I, I got a chance to meet Brahu at uh, in the VIP after party of the Cape Town International Jazz yes. Festival. It was oh, really, really phenomenal to meet him and shake hands with him. And uh, we had a gentleman with us that um, we actually, uh, you know, he was he was becoming ill a little bit. And he brought his whole family with him. And yeah. he, you know, he and I still talk about that day uh, that we met him and how just really down to earth and way cool that he was to spend a lot of time with us in that party. And just, uh, man, we talked about so many different things. Great, 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 great music. I wanted to he ask really was. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about this, this whole thing you just shared. All right. Y'all play a lot of American music on South African radio. And, uh, I listen to, because of the magic of the internet, uh, I listen to South African radio, actually African radio in general, uh, yeah. all day long, all, frequently. I just turn on my my browser and I, I listen to Kaya FM. I listen to 702, you know. Um, yeah. 
I had a podcast called Afro Pop Radio where I wanted to really, uh, and by the way, we're getting ready to relaunch that, y'all. So if you were fans of Afro Pop Radio, stay tuned. We have a, a couple of announcements there with that. But I wanted to share uh, the music that I was hearing on the continent with our audiences here in America. Yeah. Not just the Afro beats that is so popular n nowadays, Burna Boy and all that, but really the, you know, Wanda Balloon, the, you know, oh, yeah, you know, Zonky and all these different yeah. art I've discovered over there really to me need uh, to be exposed over here. Yes. But yes. I had, I'll tell you the story. So I had a group, one of those groups I brought, and yes. we we're cruising in our bus to, you know, around Johannesburg, we were going to one of our events and everybody yeah. says, well, Brother Greg, man, you know, turn on the radio. Let's hear some of those radio stations that you, you know, that you always talk about. And I turned on Kaya FM and they yeah. were straight playing American hip hop. It was really disappointing <laughs> because it was like, oh, man, we can get that at home. You know, we wanted to hear some Afro rhythms and everything. And it yeah. was just very, yeah. very disappointing. And I do know that the state broadcaster, South African Broadcast Corporation, at one time put a directive that a certain percentage of the playlist should be African music. Why do... Yeah. South African radio stations play so much American music? That's a very good question. And I think it's it's up to broadcasters like us and a lot of South Africans uh, to really, you know, blow, blow power to the nation's consciousness with the music choices that we make in terms of playing. But we need program managers, you know, some some salespeople would say in radio that, oh, the listenership is going down because, you know, people want uh, the, the the nostalgia of, oh, I grew up listening to Donny Hathaway. I grew up listening to, uh, who's in South Africa now, Jeffrey Osborne. There's, there's also just, I mean, Freddie Jackson was here not so long ago. Um, but also, I think it's up to promoters as well to have a variety. You know, if, if Jeffrey Osborne is coming in, the whispers are here. Let's have um, the Nomfundo Mo's, the young Loiso. I mean, the young man Loiso, people only here at home started noticing him after he was invited to Brooklyn Beckham's wedding to sing. And this is a young man that's been here at home doing his thing. Um, and I also actually just have a bone to pick with... Um, China, Black China's mom, who's saying that our Tyler is, is <laughs> you know, just came out of nowhere. My daughter, who's 16, can tell you that Tyler has been creating music here at home. She's been working hard. She's been grinding. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, but yeah, thank you for the Grammy nod. But what you are saying really, really, really is something that we as not just South African broadcasters, but also South Africans, to champion the you know the nation's consciousness with our music our bakanga lady smith black mambazo um you know back to jazz you have the nomfundo kaluvas um you have asia makuzeni uh you have wanda baloy that you just mentioned who's got an amazing voice you heard i mean you know mams bongile kumalo right the late mams bongile yes. kumalo yes yes um and she was amazing. But we only really show love once they're gone. And that's got to change. I that met, has got to change. I met Sister Kamala and I was in the Zulu Kingdom uh, for the South African Traditional Music Awards. Uh -huh. and, and I was there, which, which by the way, was, I've, I think I've gone to four of them. And uh, yes, yes, yes. It, it was for me as a black American, one of the most tremendous African experiences I've ever had in my life. Just being in the yeah, Zulu beautiful. Kingdom, being yeah. around the traditional dress. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm in the VIP place and yeah. I'm walking one way and Sister Kamala's walking another way. And I was like, yes. wait, wait, you're Sabongile Kamala. And she like blushed so hard. She said, she's like, you know me? I was like, oh my God, yes, you know. <laughs> and I yeah. was honored to, to meet her. But man, what a great songbird she was for sure. What a great songbird she really, really was. Um, you have the mom, Yvonne Chaka Chaka as well. Yeah. This is Yvonne Chaka Chaka, Mama Africa. But... Um, you know, Greg, it, what the story that you just related now, 
um, I'll be telling my listeners about it. And you and I have had this conversation. We say, what is going on? Um, mm. So I could say I'm fortunate and then to be in a space now after so many years in broadcasting where the, it's, 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 a, it's a dialogue that one can have with the programs manager, with the music manager to say, these are the songs because the, I'd like to stand for something. Uh, yes, I'm in, uh, I, I was inspired um, and I still continue to be, because your history as African-Americans is the same history that we have as South Africans of apartheid. Uh, the challenges you have now as, as a black brother and a brown sister um, are the challenges that we still have. 30 years into democracy, we cannot be having a conversation and fighting for breadcrumbs for our voices to be heard. Yeah, yeah, wow, that's a true statement right there. Man, man, man. Let me ask you a question. You took me to uh, a restaurant one time that I still- Mount that one. Boning. <laughs> pata, pata. Uh, you remember Mount Bonilla Kumala, um, my Mira Makeba song, Pata Pata, that pata. iconic song, Pata Pata. Yes. yes. So yes. the restaurant that I took it to is called Pata Pata <laughs> in yes. Maboneng. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> right in the heart of Jolby. <laughs> I mean, that was really a, a great memory, and I can't wait to go back there again. But let me ask you, you know, like when you saw me in there just enjoying that space, I mean, I really felt like, okay, now we, I'm I'm in it. I'm I'm not a, a tourist. I'm in the middle of the, the with the people and everything. What makes yeah. that space so special? And then the music that was there, you know, how do the people who live there, the locals, I'll just say, uh, you know, tell us what is so special about a space like Pata Pata. Okay. So um, I took you to Pata Pata. You will remember that there were a lot of people that are younger than you and I. <laughs> so I wanted to just get you the hip side of, of Jersey, of Johannesburg. Yeah. But next time you come, I'd like to take you to a restaurant that Brahu Masikela loved so much. In many interviews, he's talked about it, and I hope in September you'll come through. He loved the oxtail, the soul food of, of Nikki's Oasis. Now, Nikki's Oasis is a jazz restaurant in Newtown. Newtown is a cultural precinct um, in, 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 you know, in, Newtown has the Market Theatre, which has been amazing for storytelling. Uh, it's got the John Gunny Theatre, uh, John Gunny, and that's John Gunny, who was in Black Panther, who's one of... Um, you know, the best storytellers that we have in the country. So Brahim loved going to Nikki's Oasis, um, the likes of Moses, Daiwa Muleleko, loved going there. But what I love about Nikki's Oasis as a live jazz setting, it's it's where the elders have walked. And you will know as Africans um, how, how, how sacred it is to still connect with our elders, with our African spirituality. Uh, you've got now people like Nduduzo Makatini, who recently performed there. And he was also just relating of the fact that Prahu Masikela performed here and he used to hang here. And now the younger people are there. But I find that the government in our country in terms of preserving jazz spaces like Nikki's uh, at the Newtown uh, precinct, it's just, it's like, oh, mm. you know, it's an afterthought. And that really breaks my heart. Um, so next time you're in Newtown, so there'll be Nikki's Oasis. And then for great storytelling, I'm going to take you to the market theater as well. So we'll watch a play. Yeah. Come with your grandson. <laughs> we'll watch a play. Um, because really 30 years into democracy, the market theater is also telling amazing stories. Um, they just, right now, they've got a play about uh, the cry of Winnie Mandela. Mm. Mama Winnie, may she continue to rest in power. And then there'll be the food and they'll, there's always live jazz music from the elders and the young ones at Nikki's Oasis. Nice, 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 nice. You know, we were talking a, a, a couple of days ago about arts and culture and the role of government. And, you know, you were uh, sharing with me that you have noticed that I'm the board president of the Arts Council for Long Beach. And uh, thank you so much for your congratulations. It, it has been a, a really great experience for me. And, uh, you know, I'm learning uh, quite a bit about advocacy, 
to government, yes. um, yes. you know, uh, in support of our arts and culture. We really do believe like arts in the arts programs in schools so oftentimes get cut and everything. You know, you got to yes. really communicate with the with the state government, um, which is like your province. Yeah, like your provinces, our states. So, you know, yeah. when, when the state puts adequate resources behind, um, you know, preserving arts education uh, in the schools, yeah. uh, making sure that venues are staying open, uh, making mm -hmm. sure that people get grants, artists get grants in order to do the work so that artists can get paid, they can get the supplies, yeah. get, you know, do what they yeah. need. And I will tell you that it is a difficult proposition in the United States. Uh, we know that as we are faced with the presidential election year, that the conservatives do not really, it, it seems, let me say it like this, it seems as it if seems. the conservative side doesn't value arts and culture as much as, say, the more, you know, liberal uh, folks. Uh, they don't see this as a value, valuable service to community, mm -hmm. especially as we come out of COVID. But we would argue mm -hmm. the fact that arts is essential. Uh, arts is, is essential. Yeah, yeah. mental health to just so many things. I mean, arts in schools helps people achieve better academics. It's just on and on and on and on that you can find the benefits of arts and culture. And you were asking me how, you know, government could be more aware, I guess, of yeah. arts and culture. And, uh, you know, that that really does require someone, representatives in parliament, that's going to champion arts and culture, that understands the legacy that we're discussing on this morning. You know, is yeah. there a ministry of arts and culture in South Africa? There is. There is uh, the Minister of Arts and Culture. There is in Gauteng, our province, there's the Department of Arts and Culture. But... It's conversations where emails are sent. Um, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes you run in the street, you see the particular, um, uh, you know, official, and you're like, come and check us out. This mm -hmm. is what we're doing uh, for kids in the inner city. This is what we're doing for the elders. Mental health is, is, is a problem in our community. Um, so be a part of this um, and let's preserve our stories. We can't just have children finding out um, or, or history being scrapped. Why is history being scrapped? Um, we can't have history being scrapped. Uh, let's recharge the art of storytelling uh, for our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. Someone like Hugh Masekela inspired so many younger generations because like I said earlier on when he started the conversation, he had lived abroad, made friends abroad in the States um, and the Harry Belafontes helping them uh, and the mom Miriam was fighting apartheid uh, through what? Through music. And he came back home uh, to build the arts and, and, and give back and champion the arts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's uh, really, really important. And, and we got to tell our own stories. Uh, as you're speaking just now, I'm thinking, you know, 30 years of democracy, there's got to be a paradigm shift in education, in awareness, because I guess your school system would probably be more British based in terms of what they teach in the school system. And then now that <clears throat> you're free, <laughs> right? You have all of these stories that probably were told verbally in the community, right? But not taught in the school system. Much like here in America, I was, I made a post on Facebook because I was just kind of, for some reason I came across this. Uh, there was this book. So in our community, we had, in my day, we had Ebony Magazine. Every month. Yes, I remember Ebony Magazine. We also had it in South Africa. <laughs> yes, we were looking forward to get Ebony and my mom. We had Drum mom Magazine. <laughs> get recipes out of there. And then because she made us read so much, she would order books and everything. And when I was a young child, she ordered this book called Before the Mayflower, which talked about African mm -hmm. kingdoms and everything. And I can honestly say mm -hmm. that that is the piece of literature that awakened my black consciousness more than anything else uh, when she uh -huh. gave me that book. And it obliterated, you know, the things I was learning in the school system. Is it the same where you're hearing stories nowadays 
that are like, yo, they didn't teach us this in school. Do you have that same type of experience? Um, you know, Greg, I I was I was it's I was fortunate uh, in that like I was born in seventy nine and I grew up in um, in Everton, which is which is not far from. I mean, a few days ago, uh, it was what's now called Human Rights Day, mm -hmm. and that was actually Sharpeville Shooting Day, where mm -hmm. uh, you know black people were marching against the oppressive system of carrying the, the you know the the the, the ID book, their Donbass. And more, and, and, and the police of the past um, just shot and killed people. So history books say 69 people died. Uh, and now even that day is now called Human Rights Day instead mm. of sharp, these are the atrocities that happened on that day. So it now shows that, and what's funny is that professors from, a friend of mine who's part of the Sharpeville Foundation uh, was was on television and and it's a conversation that I have had with her uh, because I am from the Val and also because <laughs> my stepfather's father was one of the young men who was killed on that day but his name is not in the book. Uh, mm. He was a young man who was twenty four. My stepfather was only three years. His younger sister was was less than a year old. He was killed on that day. So I have been talking to her to say, please look for my, because now these professors from uh, from the States found out that actually the number now sits at 95. But when I add my my grandfather, my father's, um, it's it's hard to even call him my stepfather because he raised me since I was five. Um, mm -hmm. And he's one of my best friends. So his father, who's not in the names, is one of the people that was killed. He was a young man who was living in Everton, but had gone to Sharpeville and was shot and killed. And this is history that our kids don't know. Uh, we need more storytellers. We need no, more books for history to be corrected. So you find our children questioning now as well to say, but mm -mm, there's more to the stories of Shaka Zulu. There's mm -hmm. more to the name of the street. Street names are being changed. But mm -hmm. let's do more than just change street names. Let the children in the classrooms know what happened. We had a TRC commission. I mean, South Africa is, 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 you know, a lot of people say the TRC Commission. We had a peaceful transition, right, into mm -hmm. where we are now. But 30 years down the line, um, let's not, there's just been a lot of talk. <laughs> there's been a lot of talk <laughs> and nothing in action. And I think the Ministry of the Arts needs to come to the party because young people now, um, our children, because my generation is not like, my mother's generation and them were, were not they were not like Winnie Mandela a lot. We right. are the Winnie Mandela. We are the Winnie Mandelas, and we're saying she has multiplied. Yeah. So let, let, let's let's tell the truth. Let the history books, um, you know, tell the truth. Let's not just do what the TRC did. It did what it had to do, but then it also made some people just went there to say, "I'm sorry." Sorry mm. for what? Right. Mm. I can't heal if I don't know what you did to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because uh, I, I, in the United States, you know, we have now the discussion about critical race theory, whereas, um, I, you know, I'm going to share with you, though, you are the same age as my daughter, so. What? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm an old soul. I'm an old soul. Most of my friends are in their 60s. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm a child of the civil rights movement, and... Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I look back over history uh, in the whole United States history, you can see time and time again, there's just certain things that folks don't want these stories to be told. You know, the the, the Tulsa massacre in 1921. I mean, there's, there's many, many, many massacres that you can point to. And these were were whispered among, you know, black folks, your mom and your aunties and your grandma and them would be would talk about these things, yeah. but they weren't in the history books nowadays with the internet and we have more access to information, more yeah. educated folks who are researching and publishing books and, and everything, you know, making movies about certain, certain situations. But there is yeah. a loud voice of folks uh, and in government that do not want 
these stories to be told. There's now book banning going on across the country. And yeah. it's just really, really crazy. But these yeah. things happened and these stories have to be told. And they have to be for their children. Yes, for the, for the children to know it. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, do you hear from, well, you know, it, look, it's more white folks here that there are there's more black folks over there than, than white folks. But do you hear like the white, your white brothers and sisters, like they don't want to hear it or they get. Are no, they, actually. Or do they want to hear it? Actually, um, my circle, they want to hear it. Um, mm -hmm. It's, 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 it's. It's a conversation that wants to be heard. It's a conversation of, I mean, little things of, uh, you know, that you can't say such things to me as a black person. That's not cool. Um, so they do want to hear it. I must mm. say they do want to hear it. Um, mm. And, and, and there are those that are willing to, to, to say, where can I help? Mm. Um, I want to just touch on, and because I shared this with my family members and my children. Yeah. When you were here, it was, I mean, I've heard it in movies. I've seen it in movies where an African-American comes home, comes to Africa, and it's like the motherland. But I um, I remember it was, I think it was Will Smith when he came to South Africa years ago and he met Nelson Mandela. And he talked about how he loved, he had never in his life seen so many black people, so many people that look like him. And I remember with you, oh, I didn't get emotional here. I remember with you, at the restaurant where we were sitting on and you were seeing so many people and you say, I see my brother, he or she reminds me of so-and-so. And seeing that, I, whew, I, was, I was so sad because of really the history of the slave trade. Um, and I was so happy also that you were feeling at home. Mm -hmm. um, you felt at home. And when I told my, my son, um, and, and my daughter and I told my aunts and my uncles as well. And they said, next time when he comes, he must come to a Mukiti, um, a gathering where, you know, you have our traditional food, not just at a restaurant. And I said, no, but he comes with people like he, he brings a trip. So will we be able to feed uh, all these people? And he said, they're all coming home. So, yes, they, we will be able to. There'll be enough pups. And and ting and and morojo for everyone. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. You know, it is. I got to tell you, it is very, 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 very uncanny. Whether I've gone to South Africa or West Africa, as you know, as you, you mentioned before we went on the air here, that uh, you know, you're like, yo, you been, you you haven't been south in a long time, you know, yeah, we've been exploring, you know, West Africa, and it's the same thing. The uncanny thing is, when we go to Africa, we will see, yeah. first of all, a ton of black people. Everybody looks like us. That's not like here, okay? Like everybody, yeah. but then you see people that are not only resemble your friends, but look, it could be their twin, look exactly like you'll be sitting somewhere and you're saying, hey, hey you know, <laughs> it's really, really, really crazy. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine oh, who was in you. New York City and she was saying, she was saying, you know, they took us from Africa and they took our languages, everything like that, but they couldn't take our faces. And I, I always, they could, yeah. you know, because it's, it's really uncanny when you see your twins, <laughs> your friends, twin there in Africa, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, you know, so it's <laughs> amazing, amazing. I saw a guy that, um, I remember uh, one of I, when I was working at KJLH Radio, owned by Stevie Wonder, one of our young assistants. The last time I was in hey. uh, Ghana, I saw Oof. her twin. <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, they're Shadis. <laughs> you know, it was just really, really something. Mm -hmm. Really, really something. All right. So now, the, uh, I let was me just losing you there, but they break the connection. Okay, okay. I think we got it back, though. I saw it glitch a little bit. Hello? Can you hear me? Uh-oh. I tell you what. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay, good, good, good. Now, okay, look, uh, Cape Town International Jazz Festival. Let's talk about the jazz scene there. It's back! It's, it's back. back! it's back! It's back! 
Yes. So what? why did they wait so late to announce it? Well, I think administration challenges, maybe I might be wrong, but I think administration challenges, um, you know, and I think since COVID, I mean, you know, things have not been easy uh, for, for, for the arts everywhere in the world. Um, but yeah, it's back. Uh, the, the, the Standard Bank Joy of Jazz Festival, which is produced by Team Music Man, uh, has been going on. It, I mean, I discovered one artist uh, from Mozambique, Morera Chongisa. Morera mm. Chongisa. Please right. check him out when you have time. Um, he was he was amazing. And then we've got Mandlam Langeni. Please do check him out as well. We've got uh, Bogani Daya, who mm. uh, does Radio Sichabi. He's got his father as well. He's a musician, uh, Steve Daya. Oh, and my favorite, uh, Upat Mukoi Mkhubata. Um, let's see if you can say Mkhubata. Mkhubata. <laughs> Let's see if you can say Ikama Kulivumile. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh man, I have to think about that one for a minute. I mean, you know what? The language is really, really um I, I try. You know, I we try also, all that. I, I practice, but you know, I gotta get uh, I guess, uh, uh, you Look, it's we happy the jazz um, festival is back. It's 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 in May, um, but we really would like to see. Like I said, I'm really passionate about preserving live jazz spaces because mm -hmm. every night should be a jazz night. Mm -hmm. Every night should be a jazz night mm -hmm. uh, because it also just helps the creative economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. there's when there's jazz, there's food. <laughs> You know, we were going to the Orbit Jazz Club for uh, some that time. That closed. It closed. Yeah, that closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. But the one that you recommend is? Nikki's Oasis in Newtown. New it was Brahu's. It was Brahu's favorite. The oxtail there. Uh, Sis Nikki uh, says that Brahu wasn't a big eater. Uh, mm -hmm. But when he would eat, he would enjoy the oxtail there. Mm -hmm. I, for one, like the tripe. I like mohodu. Mm -hmm. We call it Mohodu. <laughs> tripe. In test, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, we know about tripe around here. Yes, we do. Uh, listen, oh, let yeah? me just do this. Uh, the, all right. Let's talk about some of the traditional genres. Because I mentioned to you about the South African Traditional Music Awards. Um, yes. Began to go there. And I, I actually met the brother here in the States. He stopped by the radio station and, uh, you know, he was asking the receptionist, he needed certain things. And he was from Africa and she didn't know what to do. And she's like, okay, let me go get Mr. Johnson. And uh, cause he's all things Africa, talk to this guy. So I take him in our conference room and he was explaining that he had a delegation of uh, broadcasters from the SAB. Uh, Greg, I missed you there. I missed you there. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me there? Okay. Can you hear me? I miss, I, I miss, you were saying? Okay, yes, I was talking about uh, uh, when this gentleman from the Satma Awards came to the United States. This is how I met him. And uh, he, you know, needed some things. And uh, I was able to help him out with getting his broadcasters together. Long story short, we, able, we were able to begin to have cultural exchanges with the broadcasters. We rented a recording studio in Hollywood. We brought the broadcasters there. We nice. came soul food. We had different, you know, musicians that we knew come in and play music for them. They had this young man one year uh, with, with him, with them, and it was very quiet. And they kept trying to encourage him, well, show them what you do in South Africa. Show them what we do. So finally, yeah. he takes his laptop and we put it on the big screen. And it's a ginormous stadium in, in Zululand and people are going crazy for him singing his music and he's the Muscandi music. Do you know this music? Uh -huh. I love Muscandi because, um, you know, my partner is 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 Zulu and mm. um, he loves Muscandi music. So you've got, uh, there's the young man, Nao Kuzani, That's there's the, the Hashlem Shop. Kuzani. Ah, oh, Kuzani, yes! Yeah. So yeah. there's the Kuzanis, there's, uh, yeah. And then I love also Ihashalim mm -hmm. Um 
and 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 there's a young lady now Luan Zunkulu. So you also have, I mean, with with the hip hop, you have our kids singing. I mean, rapping, not singing. My son would kill me. Um, in 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 Setswana, there's 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 a young man called Maclera who's just rapping in Setswana. We had the late hip hop Pantula who did a cover of 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 um, Imaginations, Music and Lights. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jaba, uh, he, but also just how important it is that these kids are inspired by the hip hop, but now doing it in their native language. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, so I love that. I love that I'm seeing that a lot. So, do these genres like Muscandi and then the the hip hop that sings in their native language? Do they find influences from jazz and all of that? Like, do you hear them? Can you yes, make the yes, connection yes. to jazz like you can here? You can, you can. I mean, and then there's Ama Piano. You know, you will know Ama Piano um, has just taken the world by storm. You yeah. look at that TikTok platform. Uh, yes. There's always the the dance challenge. There's always an Ama Piano song and flavor yeah. to it. Uh, so, so yeah, you you have young people that are that are inspired by jazz. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow, South African jazz, yeah. All right. Now, what about some of the old school artists that are still, is, is uh, Jonas Gangwa still around? Well, he passed on, but the music yeah. is still alive. Yeah, but the music yes. is still alive. Uh, the music <laughs> is still alive. You have also um, Dr. Kefa Semenya, um, and who's worked with, Kef- with, with Quincy Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, who You've got, they've got an academy as well, yeah? You've got Mamle Dambulu. Mm-hmm. Um, You've got ooh, Super Hot Sticks Mabuse. I remember you enjoyed the you used to enjoy the song Burn Out yeah. All My Love. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we're still jamming to Brenda Farsi. Uh, we still jam- she, Time magazine called her the Madonna of the townships, and she was like, I'm bigger than Madonna. <laughs> uh, wow, yes, yes, yes. You know, it's so funny. I, I mean, I remember. Uh, all of those jazz artists so much. And I I mean, the music is just incredible. And y'all, I'm going to drop a playlist off of YouTube in the chat uh, when we get when we get this going here so that you guys can discover some of the artists that are out there. Uh, I remember. Um, remember the um, the old club is it, I, it was in Cape Town. It was called the Mahogany Room. I don't know yeah. if you know the club, but it boy, that was my first jazz club, I think, that I went to in South Africa. And it was just really, really phenomenal. And the brother's name, his last name is M. Casey. I can't remember his first name, but he's a pianist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and then you you can't, I mean, uh, you know, Donna Brand, Abdullah Ibrahim, he'll be performing. It's He's doing the, the final tour. Uh, so he'll be performing as well in April at the San Beterine. You cannot have a conversation about jazz, South African jazz music, and not include uh, Dollar Brand, Abdullah mm-hmm. Ibrahim, mm-hmm. in that conversation. One of mm-hmm. my favorite songs um, that he's done is Manenberg. Love Manenberg. Mm-hmm. 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 What about Hilton Shilder? Is he how 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 famous is he? Well, I, I'm sure some people, but like I. I haven't. No, I have. I would hear people play the songs, but I'm. I'm not. I'm not okay. so big on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just wondering, you know, because part of our tour when we were bringing people over, part of our tours, we had something called the Jazz Safari, and when we oh, go, yes, I remember that. I remember that. We were going into the different, you know, into uh, the townships uh, in Cape Town, and uh, the sister would you know prepare food for us and then uh you know the home of a musician and they would play for us one was uh tempe blackie i didn't know if you Ah. remember him and he passed away i found out not too long yeah yes he did yes he did um there's also um you you know winston mankun kungozi's yakalinkomo uh it's been covered by a number of artists and you have to it's it's a classic um and the younger ones now there's also oh, I mentioned Nomfundo Kaluva and mm-hmm. Siama Kuzeni. Uh, there's this uh, Zoe Mudira. Now mm-hmm. she gives me a blend of Mam Spongile Kumalo and says Brenda Fasi on stage. She's mm-hmm. fire. 
Mm-hmm. Now, what about uh, I know Zonki is more, I guess, R and D. Oh, yes. So yes, we love Zonka. She we love Zonka. She's super cool. Uh, uh, her sister used to be a musician as well, Lulu Digana. The sister passed on, um, mm. and I remember one night I was interviewing Zonka, and Lulu was in, in in I was still at KFM at the time, and I said, "Will we ever have a collaboration between the two of you?" And Lulu was the first to answer to say, "No, I do music differently, and my sister does music differently." But yes immensely talented the Digana sisters yes we still love Zonke Afro Soul she's a number and then dance dance tunes Mafigi Zolo they yeah. still make people dance like it's not a wedding it's not a, a party it's not a groove <laughs> without yeah. uh, Mafigi Zolo the Hamba now <laughs> let me tell you two stories all right Mafigi Zolo came to yeah. they came to Los Angeles I was working at the radio <laughs> station and I could not believe that they were there. I was so excited. And I was trying to get the radio station to interview that was like, yo, you guys don't know these. They're huge in South Africa. They're huge yes. across the continent. And everybody's looking at me like, yeah, okay, whatever, whatever. So I had to record yeah. them, right? I had to record them. Yeah. Uh, they didn't put them on, they didn't put them on the air. They just really didn't realize who they were. Yeah. Um, and then Lyra, Lyra. Uh, oh, Lyra is amazing, and she's so resilient. She yeah. had a stroke about a year ago. She's back. Um, yeah. She performed a few days ago on her birthday. Nice. Um, she, and you know, Lyra is besides Lyra being such a sweetheart, but she's a born performer. Yes, yes, yes. Now I let me tell you, I have had Lyra on one of my stages, one of my shows I produced. Fourth uh, of July, she came and she did did the show there. We have become friends. I I, I talk to her every now and again. To you know, I check in yes, on her. Awesome. So that's, uh, that's my buddy right there. And I, then I arranged for her to um, be on the stages of one of the universities has a jazz festival. Uh, out here yes. that's that's growing and emerging and it's it's and they had called me and said well what kind of we want african artists what you know who should we have and i told them lira yeah. rocky dawuni out of, of ghana and uh, there's a brother who lives here in la but he's um from the congo uh ricardo limbo and yeah. Yeah. Um, you know they booked all of those and lira came to the, that was the very first one. There weren't many people in, the, in attendance, but that was their first one out. Now it's becoming a yeah. really, a thing. But I was really saddened when I heard that she had a, had a stroke, and I was checking in on her. And I'm really happy but, to hear you say that, that she's, she's back performing and everything. Really, yes, happy. she is. She is, she is. Nice, nice, yeah. Same thing with Lyra. So Lyra came to the radio station, and yeah. nobody, they just kind of, like, okay, Greg, whatever with her. It's like, dude, she's like Beyonce big in, in Africa, man. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really, really huge. <laughs> it's so funny how you see what can we do? I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking of solutions, right? And so we're talking about jazz, and you, we've shared a lot of names with, uh, with the audience today. And now, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have to rely on, you know, these corporations and these music programmers. We can create our yes. own podcast and music and, you know, build the, the reputation of these artists from the ground up. Certainly with Lyra, certainly with Zonke, uh, just so many people. How can we spread the word about contemporary jazz, R&B and soul music from... South Africa. I think, you know, Greg, with platforms like yourself and the community that you have uh, that is invested in getting to, to know their motherland better, and you can only really know your motherland better. We all, I mean, I have yet to meet someone that doesn't love music. Hmm. I really have yet to meet someone that, that doesn't love music. When we had uh, Leila Hathaway, for instance, uh, so before she came, we had they invited the media uh, and my previous uh, radio MD, Greg Maloka's company was actually responsible for bringing her. So uh, obviously I was invited <laughs> and yes. having the conversation with her. And she said, all she has to do is hum. And from a grandmother to a young child, they'll be able 
to connect that way. So, I mean, you know, the challenges we have in South Africa, in Africa, actually, in the continent, more people are having phones now. There are more people that have access to a mobile phone now. But a lot of our people still can't. There's abject poverty in our country. I mean, you know, you've been in Santon with your group and a few minutes down the street is Alexander, where there are people that still, 30 years into democracy, um, don't have access to the toilet, don't have access to a running running water. Uh, so data is expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think now that the access to cell phones, cell phones becoming cheaper, platforms like what you're doing uh, with, with a podcast, me being here, you inviting me onto this platform to share the music, to share the stories, um, and, and, and going to, to our embassies to have a conversation to say, we are doing this with the LA Arts Council. We've got young jazz musicians from Soweto, from Alexander, from Shabville. And also there's the stories, uh, because I was having a conversation with another broadcaster uh, who loves jazz. Uh, this is Brenda Sisani. Um, we've got International Jazz Day coming. And um, where it's it's a question of let's let this happen twice a year where there's a group of african americans coming to africa going to nigeria and there's an exchange program mm-hmm. and you know those kind of things where it's also the storytelling the, the the orators let's go back to um you know storytelling where the grandmother from 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 Shabville, uh who's now in her 80s who was shot at 18 Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was fascinated when I was talking to a friend of mine who's a playwright who said, can you imagine you are telling the story of your grandfather who was 24, uh, who was killed on that day. Maybe there was a young girl who was going down by the river to meet her lover. And, he, uh, you know, she didn't make it or he didn't make it. And he decided to, because there weren't cell phones back then. <laughs> and he felt that, oh, she probably went out with another guy. Mm-hmm. What a beautiful human story that is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the connection of, of of just us as Ubuntu, as mm-hmm. human beings connecting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so we need to have more platforms like this. We need to have conversations with uh, our embassies and, and, and corporates as well that say, because the thing is that gets to me, Greg, is always the sad story about Africa. Like, um, oh, yeah. the poor people in Africa. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Yeah. Where yeah. <laughs> you know, oh yeah. my god, they they have jazz clubs. Oh my god. I mean, don't you I mean be honest, don't you haven't you had people that come to the tour and their hotel room, they're like, I didn't know they have places like this here. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you that when we do our survey at the end of the tour, that is the number one continent. Brother Greg, they don't show us this Africa in the United oh, States. Look Every at this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. No, Mbota, thank you so much for joining us this morning, of course, this afternoon, this evening, <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> the time is. Thank you so much, brother Greg. Enkos uh, Ndabulela. Thank you so much. That was thank you so much, and it's closer. Enkos Ndabulela. Yay. All right. Good, good stuff. Now, look, how can we get a hold of you? Where shall we look for you? Where can the people find you? Thank you so much. Long live jazz. <laughs> All right. Tell them where you th- we can find you, like online. Where can we listen to you? What's our what's your deal? How can we get with known both the okay? So I am on 702. Um it, and you can, you know, download the 702 app or you can live stream. Um, so it's one of the prime media radio stations. I'm on 702. I'm on the music side of things. We're a talk station. Uh, so I am part of the lifestyle uh, brand of the station. I'm on every Saturday, 2 to 6. And this will be my last Sunday, 4 to 7. From the 7th of, of, of from the seventh of April, I'll be on 2 to 6 on both weekends. Yeah. Nice. And we're, we're about to have Good Friday. So that means more music. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I, my friend uh, Omar Essex. And, be the and I'm on Instagram and I'm on TikTok. Okay. All right. <laughs> and Facebook. You can put all that in the chat so you can connect with our sister. Nona. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, Greg. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, y'all. Coffee Conversations with Greg J. This is what it is. 
known both the live from Johannesburg, South Africa, talking about jazz and then just music in general, arts and culture exchange. We're going to continue to work with our friends like known across the world as we advocate for the arts, advocate for culture from our perspective. Maybe we can find out and how we create exchange programs. Uh, we've done a few uh, over the years. We've done a few with uh, Africa. We've brought broadcasters here to the United States. We've gone over there to explore the the nuances of arts and culture. Non Bota is um, one of the premier broadcasters uh, in Johannesburg, the largest city uh, in South Africa. She is an awesome broadcaster. She is incredible. Uh, when you listen to her, I think you'll enjoy her style. Very intelligent young woman, as you can see. Um, we've had a lot of fun together. She's shown me quite a few things culturally uh, around Johannesburg um, and uh, certainly over in South Africa. Uh, go ahead and look her up, Known Botha of uh, Radio 702, Johannesburg, South Africa. You can get Coffee Conversations across our Facebook pages, uh, Coffee Conversations with Greg J. That's the Facebook page. My personal Facebook page, Greg J., Columbus Song Coffee Company, Hannibal Media Group, Beach City Radio, BeachCityRadio.com. You can also see it live uh, or the replay, I guess you could say, on YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe. Help our algorithms grow in that area on the YouTube channel. Uh, also, BeachCityRadio.com. Uh, we do repurpose the audio so that you can listen to the audio wherever you get your favorite podcast. iHeart. Um, yeah. iHeart. Uh, uh, po podcast Bean. Spotify. Google. Just wherever. Just type in Apple, you know, Coffee Conversations with Greg J. It'll pop up. And for your listening pleasure, you'll see all of our episodes out there. Always remember to love one another, y'all. Love one another because love is in need of love today across the world. Love one another. Peace and blessings. <laughs>